A model steam engine test plant. This is part four. Marking out the position for the boiler on the baseboard, which is not in the middle, as the position has to allow for the size of the twin burners. Drilling holes in the baseboard to take four bolts, and applying another coat of varnish using a cloth. This clip shows the boiler sat on the baseboard so I can get some idea of scale. Even though this is a simple job, you still have to think about it. The mounting base, which is now painted black, is slightly longer than the boiler, and that's fine. If at this stage of the job I ignore the length of the burners at one end of the boiler, then it's still going to work, but it won't look right when the tanks are fitted at each end. One of the tanks is going to be a special injector-type tank, and the other one is just a water tank. We've all heard the saying, measure twice and cut once. Well, I'm not going to do much cutting, but I'm measuring about three times to make sure I get this exactly in the position I want it to be. In this clip, I'm just holding the ruler to give you some idea of scale. Now I'm using the ruler at each end to find out exactly where the boiler needs to sit on the baseboard. I place the ruler alternately at each side until I find a measurement that is identical. And in this case, it's five and three quarter inches at both ends. I double check this a few times because I don't want to drill the holes in the board in the wrong place. Here, I'm making sure that the mounting base is in the right position relative to the boiler barrel. And just to be on the safe side, I'm taking a measurement of this distance, which still seems to be five and three quarter inches. That is the magic number. I'm taking the measurement reference from the flat part of the board. Working from the right hand side, I now know that the base has to be five and three quarter inches from the edge. Just out of curiosity, I'm checking the measurement at the other end, and that's obviously a bit more. That's to allow for the size of the twin burners. It's also vital that the mounting base is equidistant at both sides from the edge of the board. It's really a trial and error job. I place the mount in position, measure one side, then I measure the other side, and then move the boiler mount until the ruler reads the same at both sides. I hold the mount in position and using my deep hole marker make four black spots on the board. Then it's over to the drilling machine to drill the holes. I could have done it on the bench using a hand drill, but this method is far more accurate. With 99% of my videos, what you watch is the job being done in real time as I do it. No rehearsals whatsoever. If I make a mess of it, you will see it on the video. After drilling the holes in the board, I try four 2BA bolts through the holes. The hole itself is 3 16ths of an inch in diameter, which is clearance size for 2BA. As I just mentioned, all these videos are recorded live as I do the job, and the boiler base fits perfectly on the four bolts. No enlarging of holes, no needle filing, this is the way it was done. I was quite pleased with this, so I'm going to engage smug mode. All I did was position the drill bit by eye on each of the four dots that I made on the baseboard as I showed previously. Even though there are rubber feet on this baseboard, I don't want these bolt heads to stick out below the wood. I'm going to drill some shallow holes into the board using this twist drill, which is the same size as the bolt heads. To avoid marking the top part of the board, I place this piece of Scotch-Brite substitute over the machine vise in the drilling machine. I've put a red cross on this bit because you have to be careful. A drill bit will not automatically line up with a hole in a piece of wood. Really, I should have used a countersink first. Now when I push the bolts into the holes underneath the board, the bolt heads are recessed into the board. I did finish off the job with a countersink because one of the holes was ever so slightly out. This clip shows the bolt heads of these brass 4BA bolts nicely recessed into the baseboard. You can see on the top left that the countersink is slightly larger than the others. That's because I modified it using a countersink as it wasn't 100% in line with the original hole. Using the piece of Scotch-Brite substitute once again, I rubbed down the top of the board and here I'm going to apply some more varnish, using a cloth this time. 
Remember, I don't want this board to resemble something that's been painted with a tar brush. You'll see a bit more varnishing in future videos as I build up the varnish so that it's not shiny and it's not matte, somewhere in between. I want it to be satin, sort of eggshell finish. This part of the video is running at 400% just to get through the job in a reasonable time. It's currently quite cold in the workshop, not an ideal temperature for varnishing. But as you can see, the board is starting to look much better than it did in the previous episode. Once I'd finished applying the varnish with the cloth, I added some white spirit to the cloth and wiped it over with this mixture. Here's a flashback to the previous episode before I drilled the holes. And as you can see, the varnish finish is a little bit too matte. I want the baseboard to end up more or less like the boiler, so the baseboard and boiler match each other. That's it for this episode, I can't do any more until the varnish dries. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.